All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESL Pro League. It's day two and week number nine here, the week that will, for a lot of these teams, decide if they're going to make it to playoffs or have to sit back home when the action takes place in just over a month from now. Renegades versus Misfits is going to be our first match of the evening, and it'll go here to train first off to start things off. Dazed, initial thoughts going into this matchup? Well, I think initially I give Renegades the edge. Um, they've been playing really, really well lately. Misfits, obviously, basically a brand new team. I mean, yeah, you have yeah. members that, that were existing, but you're adding two players in that are like almost complete unknowns. So there's going to be a uh, feeling out period, a developmental period too, just based off like comms and learning how each other play and whatnot. Um, so I think there's going to be some bumps in the roads in the road for Misfits. And Renegade just been on fire, right? So, I mean, what is their record now? Ah, uh, they're sitting, I think they're sitting in like fifth or sixth place at this point. Yeah, so again, we're looking at them having to choose between going to Dallas or going to the minor in Asia, and I'm assuming they would go to the qualifier for the major. Yeah, they've, they've already said that they're going to make yeah. that choice, which is why we've kind of excluded them from a lot of our playoff decisions, yeah. since even if they make it, they're going to decline the invite anyway, so. Pretty unfortunate. Yeah, I mean they got a, they got kind of unlucky with that. It's like two seasons two in a row where it happened. Yeah. So a <laughs> bit unfortunate there. There's not a there's not a whole lot that can be done about that at the moment. So they're just gonna have to uh, hope that that doesn't happen again next season and they can still remain in the playoff contention. But they had they did have like a huge turnaround because we remember I mean we were talking oh, yeah, about they it. They were now. one and seven. I bashed them at week <laughs> yeah. after week about how terribly they were playing uh, when it came to just like strategy and five v five CS wise. And it was an absolute mess. It really was an absolute mess. Mm -hmm. There is no way that with the cal caliber of players that are on Renegades, that they should ever even have like a losing record because they have a bunch of really talented guys. And I'm talking about they even probably they had a more talented team before their roster changes even, you know? Yeah. And then for whatever reason, like the players just did not get along. They did not want to play together. I have no idea, but there was definitely a lot of probably you know you don't play that un, you don't underperform that much if you don't have like serious like problems with your teammates yeah that seemed to be the case based yeah. on the hearsay after we saw a few of the players depart there at the moment by the way guys in case you are wondering why the game has not started yet we are just waiting for jks i believe we're pretty close to getting him into the server so as soon as he does join up we should be good to go to start up this match but we are currently just waiting for him and then we should be able to start up the match and jump right into things here for our first one of the day interesting note too that i think the analyst touched on as well as we shift over to the maps for a second here is the fact that while we have no cobble or cash today we're going to be avoiding both of those maps, which seems to be, you know, some of the only maps we play. And in one of these sets, I believe it is going to be this one, actually. We get not only Train, uh, but we also are going to get Inferno again today, too, which is becoming actually quite a common map for yep. a lot of these NA teams. It's really kind of shifted its way into the meta and seems to be sticking there, even for, like, the lower bar teams. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Inferno is here to stay. A lot of teams are playing it. Um, you know, nobody's really be doing it anymore. It's a map that, now that it's a bit more T-sided and the T-side's a bit more open, not necessarily even because of the map layout as much, but a lot of it just has to do with like the timer as well. Just just having like those extra 15 seconds is just huge when it comes to Inferno. Yeah. Um, just absolutely huge. So opens things up a little bit more for the T's, you know, apartments taking it, making it easier to control and just a lot of little changes kind of makes it just a little bit more, you know, fair for the T's than yeah. it was because I mean, before this Inferno with the old Inferno, that was probably the map we saw. You know, that nuke was probably like the most blowouts on CT side where you just 14-1 them, you just constantly smoke trap people, just throw four smokes at B every single round, five smokes at B, you can push really easily. And now it's just a lot more open. So we're seeing it because teams aren't, you know, nobody wants, it, it's kind of lame sometimes when you play maps. And I, I do like the direction that CSGO took just in general with their maps, just making it more viable for T's, you know, making it a lot more even like that because it just sucks when you go and you start T side on Inferno and you're playing against a really good team and a lot of time you're going to lose like 13-2 on that half mm -hmm. like obviously not anymore but you know going back and you just have to start off with a huge disadvantage and hope that you can bring yep. it back and then some and then like if you if you lose pistol and you end up losing like 16-3 and it's like if you would have played out all the rounds like if it was a scrim and you played all 30 rounds it probably would be like 17-13 you know 1812 or something, something yeah, but something because closer. of the circumstances it just looks like a blowout well we should be getting started here in a moment guys and keep in mind that 
Well, obviously, Renegades will be turning down their invitation to the playoffs should they end up within the top six. So there is going to be another slot open for a number seven team to take, and that team could potentially be the Misfits. They are in, uh, in a bit of a rough spot in terms of trying to aim for that. In fact, they're at the bottom of the 10 potential teams that could end up in the top six. But it is still possible, especially if they win out from this point forward in the season. And this is going to be a very important match for them. But the Renegades, well, they're certainly not going to give it to them, to them as not only do they still have the prize pool in the season itself to play for that they'll still be getting, but, you know, they can always crush the dreams of Misfits, and that's always going to be fun, too. Yeah, and we'll see Renegades and, and how they're going to play this. Nifty's been performing pretty well for them ever since he joined. I think he helped a lot with that team, like, just having a more... Just having another player that's not, like, just going to do something randomly or anything, because when they had... Especially like Ustillo and Ricky when they're playing together, both of them at any moment could like just peak something, right? And I think it was too much, right? Just too much freedom. And um, I think just having Nifty helps a lot because he's a very just like stable player. You know what he's gonna do. You kind of know what he's capable of. Doesn't doesn't do the crazy like try to do the craziest things all the time. Well, we are into the match now. Renegades are going to be taking a pretty swift path over here. We'll spreading out, but for the most part, sending players to box holes. Next to the waiting way outside of Ivy over here. He is going to be able to catch Sazam nice and early, but Sean with his forward position up by the ramp does spot the play in the box hole, so he's going to promptly smoke that back off, causing a little bit of delay here now for the Renegades. Nothing huge as they are just going to sit back for a couple of seconds and wait this out more than likely could still end up just going for a direct play towards that B site, but also the potential for this to sort of evolve into just an A default is very much alive too. Now you see the two guys going back down the steps, out through TCON, where JKS is also waiting. You still have Nexa with the position at Ivy, where it should be, you know, either at most one player, it's just going to be outright open now. And then you have two more still waiting up in the halls that can jump down into the ladder room and execute out through there as well. And that seems to be the path that the Renegades are going to be taking now. As time runs down, still very slow on the execution itself, but getting ready for it. Meanwhile, over on the B side of the map for the Misfits, they started to get curious as well. And Sean pushing way up there is going to be able to spot that the box halls themselves are empty and should be able to rotate the additional Z player into the A bomb site. Now, though, they need to actually stop the hit because it's rolling in. It's time for the Renegades to see if they can actually take control. It's a smooth start rolling past the old bomb tunnel with no problems whatsoever. And all of a sudden, they didn't even think that that was a possibility. Nexa picking up not only one, but two more additional kills here. Amanek and Sean are able to battle back a little bit, but overall, it's just up to Sean, a 1v3, clean headshot, and a second one, as now it's brought down to a 1v1, but Nexa focusing on the bomb plant, he's gonna go for that last kill to try to make it a 4k, not able to immediately succeed as Sean still tries to slowly lurk back up into headshot range to try and close out himself. Neither player able to accomplish that goal just yet, and Nexa really just wasting a whole lot of time. Sean, though, finally hits the headshot, and he's got a kit to boot, so he'll end up with a 4k, and clutches out the pistol round to give Misfits the early advantage here. Yeah, just insane pistol work by Sean. I mean, he doesn't have armor, only gets hit once, hits three one-taps there, ends up with the 4K. Not only that, but he had the timing flank, you know, to even let his teammates know that it was going to be, you know, backside, or, or Ivy, rather, and outside. Um, I mean, he pretty much won that round by himself. So really great stuff from Sean, and that's going to set Misfits up to hold the early advantage here. That's assuming, of course, that we don't see the Renegades immediately buying back into things on the third round and upsetting there. As they did get the plan, and now, as you can see, going into the usual second round, light by just Glocks and three P250s to start us off. As now you still up pushing in. Has already spotted Sean first off, but making a move to try and actually take him down and do some damage does not lead to as much success. Same general setup being utilized by the Renegades, however. The real goal here is going to be trying to, trying to find a way to get that second plan, and without any utility at all, it's going to be pretty rough to do that. Yeah, uh, good strat, the, the that last round by Renegade. So they take box all control, they leave a player towards Ivy, then they leave Nifty above the ladder. After they take box all control and push it back, if they take battles early and they win them, they can just go down lower with Nifty smoke. If not, they push him back, they can go back to Ivy. Nifty's above ladder, he throws back six smoke. That allows you to go Ivy to backside and then pinch on... Um, to the outside site. So I actually like that strap by them a lot. Well, again, we do still have the Renegades trying to pinch in onto the A-bomb site. And basically just your A-site default now. But this may turn itself into a bit of a ruse 
over towards the A side as we see three more players now shifting, four actually shifting over towards the Voxels, trying to possibly just funnel out and execute there to look for that final plant so that they can buy it fully in the third round instead of lacking utility or whatever for the players that end up going towards AKs. In they're going to start off their push though, over here towards Ivan. It's actually Nifty with a Glock that ends up beating out Shazam in a duel. Ominic is able to hold for one, drops the bomb as well. It's going to molly off the other side. Sean still able to hold off the rest of these players though, so more than likely not going to be able to see the plant as the last two are slowly being knocked back out and now it's just down to Nifty in a 1v3 with 10 seconds left. Sean should have definitely heard him, or Demo Duda, excuse me, should have definitely heard him going through Z, so it's going to be an easy job to knock him back out and secure the second round. How did Shazam just get Glock? That's what I'm curious of as well. This is what we're going to find out, unfortunately. At Ivy. Yeah. It seemed like it was like super long range, too. I know, like, I was just looking at the left and his health was just getting, like, just trickled down over the course of, like, six seconds. Maybe it was, like, through a smoke or something like that, and he just slowly picked them off. How could you Glock someone through a smoke? <laughs> well, no, dude. That's, that's, <laughs> that's insane. That's the, that's With the, head armor? That's the never-ending question. Well, now we do get into that gun round, of course. No plant, so it is going to be a little bit lighter bot for most of the Renegades players. You know, they get the basic smoke and flash setup, but no mollies or HE grenades to try and use. Still getting the full op setup over to Nifty, though, so they at least have that to work with. Now, though, they need to get it into a site, and they haven't seen the greatest start to the round. Already seeing a nade connect on the two players, knocking out a combined 60-plus HP between the two of them. And beyond this, Nifty still trying to kind of lurk back out from TCOM, but this is going to be dangerous. Two players that can pick up from either side of this angle, or he can just be outright spotted, which he is by the E-Box player, but he doesn't want to seem to fully commit to that battle, so just tries to spray him back through the paneling, and that doesn't work out too well. Shazam, though, getting aggressive out from Ivy. He strikes first, but now a trade comes in from Azor across the map. So he'll be able to take down Sean and Jake. Yes, well, he just decides to hop right outside of TCOM there. It doesn't go so well for him, though, as he's finished off by Devo Divek, and he's still able to hold, but a lot of ammo wasted, so Nifty given time to repair for the repeat. But whoa, when push comes to shove, that's a big old miss. You still owe is going to be able to find a little bit of revenge over here on the inner bomb site as he takes down Amanek and opens up the way for his teammates to move the bomb in here and plant, but unfortunately the bomb was still sitting way back above the ladder in Whitehall, so Azur had to fall back to pick it up and take it back down inside. Takes the battle there, actually, on the stairwell and is able to win it out against Evo Duvek, but now he's down at 3 HP. Might still be able to win it, however. The smoke moves in. Shazam does look like he's just going to try to challenge it, but the nade sends him reeling back. As the plant goes in, Azur will be given time to recover. Now it's all about just reading when Shazam moves out from the smoke, and he has missed that chance, but still lined up for the headshot opportunity. Unfortunately, can't connect upon it, and Shazam will indeed close out here, giving the 3-0 start to the Misfits. Uh, really good opportunity for Azur to actually win that round um, against Shazam. Shazam's going through the smoke. Um, he should have known where he is. Not only did he make noise, but he threw a flash from there. But Azur, I, I think he kind of played that a little bit wrong, trying to backtrack there. Um, maybe he should have watched the smoke for a few seconds to see if he goes through it. Probably get an easy kill. I do like the way Sick was actually playing E-Box. Nifty missing two crucial shots, though. He had a free kill onto Sick. He had another kill onto Devo Duvac that he should have hit. Uh, but with both both, 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 or both shots. But the way Sick, if you saw how he was holding E-Box, he wasn't holding for when they first came out. And he had an easy opportunity to kill Nifty. He just shot too quickly. Um, and didn't take his time for when Nifty was actually showing himself. But he's behind E-Box, and he just looks for when they get on the back of the blue train on the ladder, instead of peeking all the way into Team A and even challenging that, so I really like that. Well, now the running gates are unfortunately going to be broken again here, so just half buys and PT-50 pickups for most of them. They're making a lot of progress, though, as you can see, he's still going all the way in. Unfortunately, just not finding any players to actually take down uh, through an easy process here, as they just get utterly destroyed, except for Azur, who sneaks in one kill on Sick. That's going to be it, though. Pretty quick shutdown by the Misfits as they continue to claim a lead to start off this first half. Yeah, and believe it or not, that round was actually very, very close to being a Renegades win. If that player looks uh, back six and set a bomb train, he probably kills Shazam and just one tech nines him in the face. I think Shazam was even looking at hell while he was crossing. And then he gets the op. Shazam got a 3k that round, right? So if that kill goes Renegades way, that guy gets an op in hell, they swarm the site like that, they probably end up in like a... They, they Actually, I would favor them to win that round. So that was a lot more you know, a lot closer than uh, it looked. Sean Gare's getting really aggressive in inner. This could win the round before it even really starts. Yeah, the timing on this is gonna be working out perfectly. I doubt Azur's checking behind it. Where is Sean actually gonna move for this though? No, he's not moving down the ladder. He's just continuing forward further past the locker rooms here. Still early damage being done to members of the Renegades. Unfortunately backing into that Molly, so he's gonna take a little bit of damage too. But look at what Sean just found. He's got the bomb under his control.
control. Now he can just continue forward. Or at the very least, tuck back. Don't shoot. Hold don't back. Shoot, don't shoot. He's found Nifty first off. He's got to be careful so he's not spotted by it. When he does move, he freaks out a little bit, okay. but still able to connect onto a double kill. And that is pretty much going to shut down the entire push. Nexa needs to, though, trying to move in from Ivy, but Almanek even wins the first and second 1v1 that he gets himself into. So a flawless performance from the Misfits. They barely even take any damage on that round. A ton of money. Uh, misfits. You know, Sean wins the pistol round. He basically won this round. So Sean's showing up and playing great. Uh, perfect flank by him. Calculated risk to push inner. His teammate goes upper, he just pushes right up lower. Renegades doesn't even watch it at all. And then he doesn't go down ladder to just kill one person. He goes all the way to team mid, and I guarantee you while he's doing that, he's telling his team just utilize your nades, delay them, and I'll win the round. Well, the Renegades are just going to end up in a cycle now here as they're on to another just half bot slash eco round for a lot of their players. Three able to pick up armor, but that's going to be it. The others are just working with your usual P250 or Tech 9 pickup, and that's all they are going to carry into it. Few smokes, though, coming into the picture this time, as we can see. In fact, four of them able to buy up towards that. So they may still try for some sort of setup either on inner or outer. Really no option being presented just yet, but with all these players stacking box stalls, likely that they would actually send this in towards the B-bomb site. So we'll see in a moment here. And to defend this, we do actually have a pretty laid back presence from the Misfits, both of them kind of hanging around the Z and the Z train area there. So it should be pretty easy if they swarm all these smokes out on the site, and then at the very least find a plant for the next round. But actually winning it out is going to be a little bit tough, even though they are going to be given clear access to a lot of that site based on the current positions from the CTs. Yeah, Shazam actually switched his position for Almanac. He's offing back six. Going to Ivy sometimes, letting Almanac play with the Z rotator. So, uh, switch positions with him. Here comes the Z smoke. Sean holding back off, only manages to get one. Smokes come out deep and sick on the rotate, gets two. Now it's all left alone into Nifty. He's not able to do anything. They do get the bomb down, but at the end of the day, I mean, still only one kill. And we're going to see 6 0 to Misfits with a huge bank account. Yeah, Huge that's, bank account. that's the big thing here is the money is going to stack up so far here. We already got Sean's going to get 10k, and I think this is before the money bonus has actually kicked in, so they're going to get another... Actually, no, it was after after the money bonus. So still, overall, though, great money for them to work with here now, and even if the Renegades do finally start to win out some rounds, it's going to take, at this point, two or three rounds to actually break the Misfits and put them back down onto their own eco. So it's going to be rough fighting here for the T's if they uh, want to fight back. Since Peacemaker has coached almost every team, do you think he just has insane insight to how to play just against every team? Just how everyone plays. Yeah. <laughs> he's just slowly he's developing into the greatest coach of all time. Someone. Because <laughs> he's just coached every player. Someone dies. All right, he's going to be really mad about that now. He, yeah. always, he always yelled and seems to speak up when I was coaching this team. Well, here on this round, one for one trade to start things off. And some early damage done to quite a few of the Misfits players as well, both Sean and Omenek get hit. Sean down at 20 HP, so he's going to be out of the picture for a large part of this, and I thought holds well, some pretty passive angles. Now, he's still o, just comes swinging out from Ivy, though. Short-lived, as he is traded out pretty quickly by Shazam, but now the others are going to try to pinch onto this bomb site. Shazam taken down first, and Sean as well, as he's finally flushed out from cover. So the Renegades do follow up upon that early control that they got, and this is going to come down to Amanek in a 1v3 to try and clutch. Taking the Ivy path, he's already been spotted. Hits that shot. I'm not sure if he mis mistook those shots for the player he just killed, though. So he might still end up being caught out by, I believe, it is JKS sitting around the corner here. No, excuse me, it's Nifty, but he's hidden back as they've got the bomb plant on the right side of this one, so they can just take their time about this. Nifty even taking a bit of a risk there. He went up on top of the train, but no shot connects from Amonek, so this is pretty much going to be the end of him as Nifty finally peeks out, takes the shot, and puts a round on the board for the Renegades. Yeah, Renegades really picking up the pace there. Played a lot faster that round. Um, went out team mid early, looked for fights right away. Made it into like a 4v4, and then from there, you know, JKS could just find a little opening, gets to the bomb train, and make something happen. But now, this round, you know, this is the thing that they need to do. They need to win this round, too. You gotta win two in a row at this point. If you, if you lose this round, you're gonna be back down to a save. We're probably gonna end up seeing like a 9 1 scoreline. So, this is one of the most important rounds of this entire game for Renegades. And they do end up going back to the slower pace of setups here, too. Just a guy hanging outside of Ayu with a few more trying to go slowly towards box halls where you have Amanek waiting. They still have the double op setup on the CT side. Smart Smart decision from the Renegades, though, they just pre-flash that corner to make sure that if there is an opera, he doesn't push them. And that's going to send Omenek reeling back to the uh, other side of the bomb site here. So he'll just wait for it. And he was also the solo site defender at the moment. So not going to be the wisest choice to stick around after being flashed out there anyway. So that gives control early on to the Renegades here at the box halls. They've Looks got like it's, it's their exact pistol round, actually, mm -hmm. so far. And we'll see if they end up going back to Ivy. And it is a little bit pistol round. 
Shazam is going to find himself mollied out from Ivy itself, but he just free mollies inside to block off Nexa. Omina hits the first shot downstairs here and is trying to play a little bit more actively about this one. Shazam also punishes Nexa, trying to push out from Z, and now he still tries to make a move, but it goes right into the crosshairs of Omanek as he picks up yet another kill. And unfortunately, while the plant has been found by the Renegades here, the victory probably will not happen. Sean just freely walks up through the left side on the sidewalk there to punish Azur, takes him no smoke. out of the play. And Molly's gonna do it out, but the thing is that Molly goes down really early, I feel like, yeah. so they can still wait that out patiently and then just figure it out afterwards. Although JKS just hitting these shots. Now a Molly from up on top, though. They're just gonna stick this defuse, and unfortunately with the other Molly up on top, that is gonna block access, and JKS tries to push it, but does end up getting burned out. So the Misfits will close out the round and reset the money for the T side. Yeah, it took a, took a couple players down with them. And we'll see, I, I think though they might buy here if you're Renegades. Um, fortunately for them, Shazam gets a pick, Ustillo dies, and Nifty dies right away, puts it into a 2v5. Nifty just goes to like flash over and then peek and hold while his teammates rush down. Um, Renegades with an aggressive buy, Tech 9s, AKs, and we'll see. I think they're going to do something fast here for sure. Well, out they will go here with just the mixed bag of buys as Ustillo kind of leads the charge again for these players. Already moving halfway through Sandwich here, but the rest of the team is really far behind, unfortunately. It's going to take a second for them all to get out here. When they do, they jump into a Molotov. Nifty's at 9 HP. Devo Tubek just killing players while completely blind. Shazam as well just destroys Ustillo with an attempt to jump out from the smoke. Now Nex is going to make a move. Did he not spot his player sneaking around him here? As Shazam is going to be able to pick up an additional kill here. JKS trying to change the odds, but it's not working out. And at the end of the day, we're left to a 4v1. Hazard gives himself away and can't even get that kill on a sick with only 27 HP. Misfits go back to their dominating stance, 8 to 1 now, with the Renegades being forced onto a full save more than likely here. Yeah, but it wasn't. I don't know. It, was, it like wasn't a full buy by them. Um, Azur and JKS still have a lot of money. They have like 3 9, 4 4, or something like that. So. A little bit odd. Um, they make a chaotic scenario happen. They throw the smokes, they jump through them. But Misfits playing great right now. They stop it right away. Barely lose any players. And now we just see four blocks and a Tech 9 on Renegades. These pre mollies are destroying them now when they try to go outside. Next is already down to 34 HP because of that. And Devo knows it, so he's going to move in to punish that even further. Now they try to go towards inner, but they just smoked. I think they, no, they didn't do anything uppers. They do have free access to upper here. And Dominic doesn't actually realize it at first. Sean is the main player. Try not to actually watch out for that. But he's going to be careful, otherwise he's going to get overwhelmed just like that. JKS does do work with a solo tech nine. And again, the plant is found, but at this point in the game, that means very little unless they can actually somehow turn around this 2v4 with a Deagle and a tech nine. Obviously not going to be very likely here now that JKS has been pushed back out and really just trying to hold and pick up an additional kill or two as he knows that bomb is long gone gets the kill he wants there is a rifle down there if he wants to go for it but doesn't seem to actually want to push for it when push comes to shove ends up re-peaking into devil duvek who will take him down anyway yes yeah, so we're going to see a pause come out probably from renegades i would think um they're going to be able to get a buy they got the bomb down last round so a bit of bonus money there but overall nothing significant being found here by the Renegades as they're just going to end up in the same cycle that we saw just five or six rounds ago where they're having to go between these just half by purchases and full investments and almost never getting anything done even the one round picked up still did not do much of a dent into the Misfits economy as they're still looking quite strong and obviously again even if we do see a bit of a turnaround from the Renegades Misfits will be looking fine for a lot of the rest of the half now so yeah, I mean, they had a chance to probably break Misfits or at least put them on a really bad force buy. Um, when they did win that one round, it actually destroyed their economy pretty much. But, you know, now it's obviously recovered. Um, but, but really, that's the only chance they gave themselves, right? But, I mean, then then again, they did lose the 1v4 to Sean on this round. So, yeah, very true. So now we are... That's a pretty big opportunity squandered, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so the Renegades do just end up going for Whitehalls to box to box Hall's controls again, as we've seen many, many times. But they're just going to peek. The, before they were pre-flashing this, this time they don't even try to check for that one. Though. Omenek just gets a freebie right at the start. He's still going to be able to hold upper, obviously having to watch his flank here, but at the moment controlling it really nicely. Nexa able to strike back, but he's being surrounded too. Still holds his ground, though. He's up to a 3k back in those halls at this point. And now it's brought the situation down to a 1v2. Shazam, he doesn't even need that off. He can just do work with a pistol if he wants to. Nexa's at 26. He still is at just 6 HP. But Shazam is going to stick with it. 
as he continues to push forward, retaking that control very quickly. And Nexa, thankfully for Shazam, is out of the picture at this point. So he only really has to worry about Ustilo down on the bomb site. But Nexa, however, has himself a Molotov, so he can just wait this out as long as he wants to. Shazam's gonna walk into the first free kill, jumping onto the bomb. He'll have to get off it, because in comes the Molly. Shazam already realizes this, or does he? As he is burning up quite a bit. I was hoping he'd see the repeat from Nexa there. Not gonna happen, so he's just gonna have to go for it. Even a second Molly going onto the ground too. Nexa is trying to run, gets behind the box in time. I think that Nexa is gonna end up winning this out on the timer regardless at this point. So Shazam just moves in, tries to go hunting, but Nexa has successfully evaded Shazam. And in his last ditch attempt to jump onto it, he even misses the no-scope. <laughs> Finally hits it on the second attempt, but Nexa knows at that point that the round is over. So just has a little bit of fun with him at the end. Finally, the Renegades will get their second round onto the board. Yeah, and... Honestly, Misfits played that round really well. Almanac gets that early kill. He gets the second guy, and then Nexa does this. Yeah, it's a massive triple kill hold in the box holes here. Yep. That does essentially set up the round for a win. I mean, the timing of, about that is, like, he's killing the guy upper while two people are flanking him. You know, so if he doesn't perfectly position himself to not be seen by those flankers, and then those flankers, you know, they fail to trade on him, and all of a sudden we get a 2v2 with a Stillo pushing up and killing that other player. Now we see another aggro angle from Omnic. That's going to be a kill all day, every day. And there's no follow up on that either. And Smoke is already in position next to the server, so he escapes. Essentially, Scott Free loses like a quarter of his HP. Not going to be the same case for Devo Duvek, though, as he's spotted early on by JKS, and he's almost able to follow it up with a second kill. Fails to check his flank over by the sandwich, however, so Sick is going to be able to trade out that kill, thinning out the numbers once again here for the Australian squad, as they're not done just three alive here. Azur trying to change up the stakes once more, but unsuccessful about it. As Sick takes another duel and wins it. Shazam still waiting patiently outside here. Nexa finally striking to take him down and continuing forward as he gets the second kill here, too. 1v2 sit up. There's a minute left on the clock, so very much room for Nexa to actually win out this situation. But he is going to have to still find himself a way onto his site to plant the bomb first off. Oh yeah, he can absolutely win this. Um, 2v1, full health, 50 seconds left, and he has time to go anywhere. He has time to go team mid, time to go inner. They're going to have to start respecting inner soon. At the moment, though, just playing really aggressively up towards the wall outside here. And in fact, inside of t too. So Nexus has got to be cautious. He checks this corner and unfortunately fails to do so. So that will lead to the quick shutdown by the Misfits as their lead solidifies into double digits now. 10 to 2, a plus 8 advantage and Renegade's having to go onto a save here. Yeah, I don't know why Sick uh, is really trying to fight you there. Long range by, like that, just kind of going for kills, I think. Actually gets punished for it, you know, by losing the duel. But luckily for Misfits, uh, you know, Renegades isn't able to come around next and not able to clutch it. So now we see another just five Glock eco and Renegades, although they won that last round, they won it with one alive. So what happens? They lose the next round and then it sucks. I think at this point, Misfits, you know, is sick like taking those deals. I think they're just loosening up at this I'm point. Gotta they... watch his upper better though. That's twice now. Well, thankfully, they are going to get a move and then shut this down pretty quickly. But another round where Renegades invest pretty much nothing at all and still at the very least are able to get the plant, which in that situation, that's going to be your main goal. So they get themselves the money to try and send themselves forward towards the end of this half with the round itself is still going to end with another three-man live squad for the Misfits. So they'll continue to push forward up to 11 here with a pretty strong lead regardless of the outcome of these last few rounds. Yeah, I mean, that's twice now, though, that people have just jumped out of upper with, like, pistols and killed Sean. Um, kind of swarmed them, so... Almanac needs to keep, you know, just keep a better eye on that, help Sean out a bit more. Almanac's doing a good job making a 4v5, a couple rounds in a row, but you, know, you gotta back your teammate up. Teammate up. <laughs> <laughs> so into one of the last rounds here, and it could be the last gun round, or big investment round anyway for the Australians here, as now they are just gonna be working with AKs and basic utility setups. The only player that gets anything beyond smokes and flashbangs is JKS with that single Molotov to use, more than likely in the post-plant scenario. Should they get themselves into an inner setup here, but the bomb is set up more for a sort of default style of play. So this could just be noise being made in the back halls over towards B early on here. But they're trying to set up for something bigger onto the other site, which again, really hasn't been a hallmark of theirs. They found, as you were mentioning, a lot better success, specifically just swarming out of upper, trying to take control of the B-bomb site. But even so, a lot of trades still coming back in from the Misfits players, even on that inner site. So no option is really perfect here for the T's. And going slow, though, they've consistently been going down 4v5 and haven't even looked close and winning most of their rounds. So this could just lead into 
complete domination by Misfits again here if they don't execute properly upon this. Still no change-ups in the overall shape of this setup, though, for the Renegades with only 45 seconds left now. We would think that the guys from the Voxels would start to move back, but they are finally going to do that over here on top of the ladder. And indeed, the Smokes and Molly setups are going to start to move their way back in so that the Renegades can start to push their ways out. Molly just denied Ivy presence, though, so now we do have to see Nexo waiting a little bit longer. He decides not to, though, and because of that, Shazam not only going to be able to open up on a Nexo, but finds the second player pushing out for the ladder room. JKS escapes with one, but sick on the site itself. Unfortunately, to get very far. Nice shots from JKS jumping off the ladder. He picks up his second kill. Unfortunately for him, his teammates are not going to be anywhere near as successful and they do decide to shut it down pretty quickly. 12 to 2 now, dominating advantage for the Misfits, and on this last round, you are just going to see, for the most part, a Tech 9 armor round for the Renegades. Nice shot by Shazam, peeking over a Molotov like that. That's, that's very difficult to see, and the, the ops of Misfits, though, have taken over this game. Um, Omanek and Shazam have absolutely dominated. And Renegades have not been able to really do anything to restrict that at all. There's only really one or two key rounds where Almanac through inner ended up getting smoked back out or something like that. But I mean, again, even though like a couple times, you know, as they're just coming up very quickly here on this Tech Nine Galo round, as they're pushing into sight, but I don't see much hope with the bomb down at Hell and Eyes on it. Although that wasn't a smart play. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully Bomb's still down though, and Azar down at 50 HP himself. The one that is defending it, you'll note, is like one tappable, so Azar is going to have a pretty easy lineup to get that kill. Now he's going to be cautious of players flanking against him though, which he is watching for that at the moment. With a minute and 15 seconds left on the clock, there's still plenty of time to set up for his own success here. He spotted the push, came out from Almanek over from the other site. Now that the Bomb itself is open, he'll have time to move in, retrieve that. They've been re-smoking off the Ivy Tunnel too to prevent Shazam from re-entering that quickly. Bomb, though, does finally go onto the ground, and Azur, well, he's just ready to take these duels now as he moves back. Spot Shazam at the last second, able to execute upon that. Misfits continue to try and move in and shut down Azur 1v1, but that's not what it needs to do. Would have hoped that both would have tried to go in and just clean up shop on a double peek, but it doesn't work out, and now Azur has the potential to ace, clutch this out for his team, and at the very least pick up a third round to close on the half. Still one more kill to go, and it's been against Almanac, who's been on fire, but that's mainly been towards Inner. Hasn't really been tested so much out here yet. Azur, though, is ready when Almanac goes for the push, and he is going to be able to ace clutch to close out the half there for his team. 12 to 3 is going to be the scoreline coming off of the half. A lot of work still to recover for the Renegades, but hopefully off that ace we can see something magical in the second half. Stick with us guys right here at the ESL Pro League. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Logitech G. Pay Safeguard, Legion Lenovo, Mountain Dew League, and ESEA. Well, it's been a dominating first half here for the Misfits, mainly off of the hands of the offers, Almanac and Shazam. But right at the end there, we saw a big old clutch ace from one of the members of the Renegades, and it did bring them back in with a slight amount. Unfortunately, they are still only going to be carrying off of that half, which is three rounds, so a comeback is still going to be rough unless they carry through with not only this first pistol, but the next couple rounds after that as well. I mean, it was Sean that, that started Misfits out just great. He won the piss round for him. He won that huge round when he just had an ump and flanked team mid at the start of the round from Inner. Um, and Renegades, honestly, the rounds that they won, they really had no business winning. You know, Nexa, the, he should have died when they double flanked him and knew where he was. That should have been a trade kill. 
Uh, Ustilo gets another kill with Inner for that round that they won when he was in that 1v1 with Shazam at the end. And then that last round when AZR aced them, I mean, two players, it's 4v1, they just like walk through smokes, they play super undisciplined, and they basically throw away that round. So, realistically, I mean, we probably should have saw like a 14 one half. Yeah. Well, at the very least, Renegades are able to battle back. Seems like some of the players on the Renegades you saw, though, from the scoreboard are having a bit of a rough time. Nifty still sitting down at like 20 ADR currently. But then again, remember, again, Sean won the 4v1 on Pistol with no armor. <laughs> very true. No <laughs> yeah, so both teams kind of... There's room There's room to argue the scoreline yeah. both ways, yeah, in theory. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> So to start off this round, Sick is going to be pushing his way through. Ivy leading the charge for his team. He picks up that first kill on Nifty. Sean, I'm pretty sure saw the head of JKS. They're going to know he's hiding out here. Only really one trade back so far from the Renegades roster as Azur has been able to pick up a kill and now trying to wrap around for a quick flank, but they detected that and Shazam just cuts him off before he can get anything done. Yustilo now back into the action as just him and Nexa left alive and Yustilo being very aggressive about the way he's proceeding here, but it doesn't work out. And at the end of the day, the three remaining players each pick up at least one kill and close out on the pistol, and so long as they don't get ecoed in this next round, they might as well already have this map secured. Yeah, I mean, CT can be, you know, CT train can be very, very CT sided. Having said that, I mean, if you don't eco them here, I think 14 3, I agree, is too big of a de deficit to really overcome, especially with how the money's going to look on T side. So it looks like Misfits are just going to go fast outside, brush it as quickly as possible. And they have a great setup. Yeah, now Azure's going to move in and try to close out as many of these players as he can. Unfortunately, it's only one. You still low gets none. Nexa, he's been good at these pressure situations, but this time again, similar story. For those that did end up successful, they only picked up one kill max, and it's just not enough to close out. So the eco doesn't happen and Misfits push up on 14. Yeah, they had a really good setup for it. I mean, they stacked outside. They had two players up close. Those two players, if they just get like one each and other players are more aggressive with them, I actually do think they probably win that round. But fortunately for Renegades, you know, it's 14-3. They got another force by this time. A little bit stronger, um, but still just uh, not much hope. Yeah. As that Shazam is going to waste, well, no time going out, but apparently no time dying either, as Azur just gets the full speed headshot against Shazam. Yeah, I don't really like that play by Misfits. I mean, it's just, it's really easy to stop something like that. So that is going to slow down Misfits immensely. And not only that, but Azur just sneak back up here and retrieves the AK. So now they've got a big gun to play with, and they've got armor bought up behind it, too. And since it is still going to be another basically full investment as much as they could anyway for the Renegades, they push in, they get their second kill now. Thankfully, no one from the Renegades decides to move outside towards T-Spawn, as they would have detected the bomb there. The other three are split up pretty heavily right now. Devo Duvek and Sick trying to work towards Ivy, while you've got Omenic way over in box halls currently. So the overall end game is still going to be a little bit confusing here. As even so, we see Ustila rolling back in, getting some good damage done to Devo Duvek. Brings him down to four HP. He's pretty much out of the action for the rest of this round. Now he's got to hide back with some pretty passive angles. Sick is able to spot the sneak play from Ustila, though, trying to go back on top of the train and find them out. And meanwhile, well, Amanek had snuck himself into the inner bomb site, but he didn't find much success there either. Now Azur, finding a super long-range headshot to finish off Sick, and it just falls to Devo Duvek, who's in a 1v4, 30 seconds remaining, doesn't have the bomb. He'll go down to Azur, and Renegades do indeed find an upset round. Yeah, and Misfits with not much money. Um, we'll see if they do decide to buy here. They can get two AKs if they want and three pistol armors. It looks like they're going to save. Oh, nope. They do buy. So Shazam gets a uh, glass cannon AWP. But Renegades has a nice buy. Like, they could... I mean, they could definitely like, make this pretty competitive. This is barely just completely breaking this. Fits here around the scoreline. Back up a tad off of that. But obviously Misfits, after you know the straight-up rushing towards T-Con doesn't really work out for them anymore. They are going to have to be a bit more tactical about the way they proceed here. Specifically, more than likely, I mean, not super tactical. They are just going to send more than likely four players towards Inner and have Devo Duvek either late or early entry to try and cause some trouble towards A. And make it look like it's sort of a default-style play. But Renegades already have two players set up in B and two up close as well, which is going to make it even harder to find the impact and just get into the site to begin with. Nifty, though, ends up getting challenged first off over by Ivy, by Devo Duvek, and Devo Duvek gets the better of him, brings him down to 58 HP. Beyond that, though, no real action following it up. We're still waiting for the actual group to start their push inside and try to go for this inner hit, which at this point, Renegades pretty much know that this is happening, so they're going to be able to weigh out most of their utility to stop this kind of a play. Misfits away to maybe a little bit too long to execute upon this, and they have been found out. 
So they may decide to change up their own strat as well. But in the meanwhile, still waiting for Devo Duvek to try and find that entry against Nifty. You know he's hiding around here somewhere and indeed follows through with the kill. Only losing 40 of his HP. Now the rest of the team, though, because they are going to try to move back in. He's still thinking he has these shots here. Creeps way around the backside of these players and brings one down very low, but is unable to actually execute anyone so far. There you go. There's a first pickup there against Sean, and he drops the bomb too. And now this is going to open up another leak, which left will have to plug in a second. JKS just freely going up ramp currently. Almanek will be able to spot that, though, as he checks back from upper, punishes JKS, takes him down. Now, all of a sudden, we're looking at a 4v2 against the favor of the Renegades, but they've only got 12 seconds to be able to get that plant. Thankfully, they're doing that right now. Nexa, though, just holds in a, st in, in a standard position and is able to take down two players from it here. Azer, though, will be found out in a flank, and now it's just Nexa with 5 HP, trades over to an AK, so he's got a little bit more firepower to play with, but way in the backside over there. They've got players hanging out. No Molly to play down on, but Shazam, because Nexa's solo, can just swing out with his Glock, finish the job, and push Misfits up to map point. Yeah, and I mean, both teams just trying to take, like, big individual risks and plays throughout this game. I mean, not really working out for either of the, you know, either sides, right? Yeah. Um, just goes to show, I mean, those plays, very low success rate, generally, you know? Um, the one that we did see work really well was when Sean had that ump and pushed in there, but that wasn't, like, too risky of one. That wasn't too bad of one. Because when you're going up those stairs with an ump, like, it's actually pretty, you know, CT-sided. Um, but again, we just see a rush outside from Almanac. Gets taken out early. This is exactly what happened in the last round that they got ecoed, except last time it was Shazam. So I don't know what they're thinking with this. Um, just playing the game like they've already won it. And even Renegades on, on their side is playing like they've already won it. So just... Odd play all over. Yeah, and again, that's going to continue as they do just sort of force their way into the B bomb set here. Devo Dubek not starting off so well. Same thing from Sean as he's taken back down. Finally, a kill from the Misfits here, but he's traded right back again. And Nex is just going to continue to punish these guys here. Shazam's last man standing. He can't get anything done. He's no coverage moving out from ramp. At the very least, is able to hold a secure position here, but just gets flanked out by Ustilo. And that ends the round pretty quickly for the Renegades. Yeah, again, I mean, I don't know why Misfits thinks this is such a sick play. To just rush yeah. out team mid with one player on against like umps and stuff like that. I don't I don't understand. It, it. worked in like the second round, but after they started fully forcing into it with armor yeah, and everything. Even then, probably shouldn't have. I mean they just didn't have a good setup on Renegades. Like those two players that were close could have won that round. It was an instant C Z kill first. The five seven guy just kinda failed and their other teammates they didn't have a cohesive setup, right? If there was a guy that ran to like sandwich and pushed them from that side of sandwich and went to the left of that train, like I almost guarantee you Renegades would have won that round. Well, now we are going to end up going into a more, I think, default style of play for the Misfits. Still aggressive pacing to it, though, when you look at the fact that they are already trying to push up Ivy a little bit. We've got the guy from Tcon moving out already here, too. That's going to end up being, I think, sick. Just kind of snuck his way back in, and T is boosting up on top of the server, which does catch a little bit of damage on Eustillo. Resmoke moves him in, in, though, in the attempt to block that, and in the meanwhile, the player that pushed out from Tcon has already been taken down. Devo Dubek, though, catches this first kill against Eustillo, and now Nifty's got to be very, very careful from his own position, as there is still presence working its way in from Tcon, and he's Gotta be aware of that. Nice flick shot on the Devil Duke. Hopping away to a second one as he finds Sean as well. Azur set up already to counter out the ladder room, but uses the entire clip. Thankfully, it's a clean switch over to the USP as him and Nifty are able to close out on the last few kills, and Nifty ends up with a massive 4K on the round. Yeah, nice hold by Nifty. Just this is a nice shot actually when the guy jumps. And Molotov runs in here. This shot was sick. Immediately goes up the ladder for safety. That was a nice play by him. Yeah, so Nifty finally getting himself kind of back into the action after he's been quiet for almost his entire map. I've just doubled his kills off of that round right there. Next again, man. Also a very active addition to the Renegades who's shown up the frag so far. Immediately taking down Devo Duvek as Misfits once more did try to force players into the open very early on with minimal buys again here. You still are just finding Sean out. Already down to three, sick. He's trying to sort of overwhelm Azur if he can swing out and find him, but not going to work out again. The last two are being pinched upon at the moment by players pushing out from Z on the CT side. So really just a survival mission for these last two to try and punish anyone from the CT side if they can. Do a little bit of economical damage here for the long run, but overall is not going to end up working out more than likely. Omenek now will be your last man standing as he falls back and more than likely he's just going to either dive down ladder room to try and finally meet his fate or hold up on top here. Let's decide to do the earlier of those two options where it'll be pretty easily handled by Azer. 
Yeah, so Renegade's bringing it back to 15-7. We are going to see a buy from Misfits come out here. Uh, AK armor on all their players. Pretty decent amount of nades. I mean, I'm assuming they buy. Yeah. But, I mean, they gave them... They, they have given Renegades, like, a lot of chances um, to really, you know, get a lot closer in this game. And, I mean, anything could happen in Counter-Strike, um, especially on CT side of train. Well, early on, the split is going to shift its way primarily towards the inner side, as you can see there. But this is nothing more than just your usual setup towards what could be a default A play as well. So nothing being given away just yet. They still have the standard two pushing towards Ivy as well. And Flash going in, but it is a complete miss. However, Nifty took a very aggressive angle. Oh, he's able to hit the shot as the smoke blooms, though. And not only does he get that kill, but he, for the now, at least saves his own life. If he didn't hit that shot, he would have been a dead man very, very quickly indeed. And then also follows it up with an additional pickup against Devo Dubek, who was trying to find the revenge frag, not able to get it. And what's even better, Azard is doing great damage to Sean, spraying up through the paneling above the ladder. Sean is looking for a response, which is never going to go very well. Sick is able to hit something as he finally finds some success sneaking back in. There is one more to eliminate. This opens up something which they could probably try to have used. The big issue, though, is the bomb is still way back outside of T-Con, so they've got to send someone over there to retrieve it. Six continuing to get aggressive, though, picks up the kill, but tries to run away. And Nifty also dispatches of the second player still inside. Now this is down to Sean, who was the designated guy to fall back and pick up the bomb. And he's set up in a 1v2 with only 20 HP. 35 seconds left to make the play happen. Unfortunately, though, Mazar read into the fact that this third guy might have not just been in the site, so he's going to go out here and maybe be able to meet Sean before he even gets the plant. It doesn't look like he's actually seen Sean, where I think Sean definitely spotted Azer though. Didn't realize if he's gone past it or is still hiding behind the green train though and this is where Sean loses his lock on his opponent. He's going to have a bit of an awkward shuffle to try and find him. Now though he needs to go for the plant. Only 10 seconds remaining. I was hoping he'd find Azer peeking out one more time before he went for it but it didn't end up happening. A lot of the CT seemed to think it was heading towards the other side, including Azer, who just walks into Sean. Apparently doesn't hear it happening, so now it's all up to Nifty. Sean's got an aggressive, he's gonna move right in. He had the angle, but Nifty's able to hit the shot right at the end of it. He has another 4K op round and brings the Renegades up to eight now. Yeah, very nice round by Nifty. Gets two kills through the smoke at Ivy, comes towards inner, hit a really sick shot onto, I want to say, Omenek. And then... You know, that the last 1v1, he should shoot there so quick while he's in Z. So some good stuff from Nifty. And again, really just shooting his scoreboard up to the stars at this point, considering where he was at the beginning of this half. And the Misfits have to go back down. You know, in a lot of ways, a very similar process to what we were seeing from the Renegade, just going back and forth between full buys and purchases. And they're not even really able to consistently get the plant that often either. Thankfully, last time they did, but it's still not going to be enough to push them into a full buy for this upcoming round. They are going to be working with mainly Tech 9 armor purchases here and little bits of utility. Everybody in the box halls really early on in the round, though. They all just push directly for it, not leaving the extra player out towards Ivy, not leaving an additional player or players kind of hanging out towards T-Con or anything like that. So all of them holding here, all of them prepared to go for a quick execute. Renegades have already right into this one, though. They push into T-Con. They pushed up towards Ladder, and they know this is not going to be happening towards Outer, so they'll work for an early pinch. And now the Misfits have to go into this site. They need to take some sort of ground. Otherwise, they're not going to find themselves any way outside of this position. And they will just get utterly destroyed as soon as they try to make a move. Followed up upon. They do try to use all the utility they have to set up some success to move into this site. And Omenek delaying himself as best as possible. First kills, though, very much so going by the way of the Renegades. And in fact, there is zero trade so far for the Misfits until right now in Shazam. He'll pick one up with his Deagle. He did spot this player trying to move out. He was unable to follow through with the second kill. We do see Nifty closing it out to put Renegades up to nine now. You know what I think is the, uh, the best setup to do? when you have like a team mid control and close ladder control. What is that? I think if you put three in her, you have a guy stay ladder, and then you have the other guy, you know, because he pushed Ivy, so he knows they're not T-spawn, right, or team mid. So he could stay like aggro team mid towards T-spawn more. And then when they come down ladder, that guy just gets as many kills as he can, right? And you could even play outside the ladder and wait until they get down and then swing out, which is really strong. And then, if they do go out ladder and go towards the site, that guy's just going to be in team mid, and he just kills them while they're crossing towards E box from the back, and it's super easy, right? Um, and then you just have three players towards center. And you could also quick ladder flank if your inner players kind of fail. For right now, as we get ourselves into the next gun round here, the Misfits still splitting up in it, just that default pattern. 
The Renegades themselves have been allowed to push up aggressively, though, but this time it's not going to be as open as it appeared in the last round here. Eustillo just hiding out inside of the T-Con. Yeah, this is Eustillo's, like, role on their CT side terrain. He's always the one. I mean, it, it's usually on most maps. He's the one taking, like, the initiative to push, to get aggro, to get information and make information plays. He's the guy that, you know, usually takes upon takes upon himself to do that role. He's going to be tested in a moment, however, as we can see the three-man push getting ready to move in against him. Some are sitting up for utility, so Shazam may just you know, completely walk into this unawares of the fact that Eustillo has an aggressive position. So he's going to pick up that kill, mollies it back off, Sick tries to move in a challenge, and he gets the kill, but the spray is messy, so he's not able to get himself outside of the molly in time. Azur gets the double kill and ladder, and now Tebo's just alone wondering what the hell happened as he goes down to Nifty, peeking into T-Con. Eustillo did a great job, gets that first kill, backs out, throws the molly. Even though he's full blind, doesn't matter. Six just crouched spraying and a molly took him forever to kill him. And this is the exact situation I'm talking about. Where play like around there. Just an easy kill, right? Perfect shutdown for the Renegades that time. And this is going to take us into a Misfits pause, I believe, as they need to figure out well, what exactly they're going to do here to push the one round worn onto the board to close out. They haven't really tried, like they were doing it at the beginning towards uh, towards outer, but they haven't really tried anything like fast inner yet. They've been pretty passive when they've tried to set up for inner takes. So maybe we could see that on the upcoming round if they do another tech nine buy or something yeah, like I that. Yeah, I think they've only done inner on their pistol buys actually, right? I think so, yeah. They might have done it on like one gun round, but it wasn't really They did it on the round where Sick was in, a, they were in the 3v5, remember, and Sick just went down lower and got that kill. Omnic went upper and got that kill to bring it to a 3v3, I think. And then Sick went into Connector, a one for one. We can see the stats back up on the board. Definitely a big increase for Nifty overall, even though he's still definitely lagging behind some of his teammates a bit, but definitely massive increase in his overall impact just in this half alone, as he's had two or three rounds with massive implications behind him in the amount of impact he had. So definitely underscoring it there a little bit based on the stats, but it's only 47 dollars though. That's a problem yeah. with Nifty. He's like, he has huge rounds and he has these rounds where he goes really crazy. And then he has the rounds where you just need him to get one kill. Like, remember the, like in the T side when he had those two free kills around E box and doesn't come through, right? Well, yeah, he was completely signed for the entire first uh, time. Me, I would, I would always rather have the guy that's just going to be like the consistent guy who's going to get those kills that you require and need because then you can build off that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't really. Uh, I think he, I think he had four kills overall for the entire first half. And that's when he was sitting down. When we checked it, if I remember correctly, he was sitting around like 20 ADR. So he's gone up since then and had like two or three rounds with four Ks in this half. But unfortunately, the wound from the first half is uh, still there a little bit. But anyway, it is unpaused now, so we're getting back into it. And as we have seen the repeating pattern go back and forth now, it is time for Misfits to go back down into a Tech 9 armor purchase with only Shazam going for the Deagle buy. So minimal utility. They do have a, a few mollies and smokes to toss around, but beyond that, that's going to be it. And Renegade still looking confident to try and run this comeback and take it into OT now. But it is going to be fast again, at least for at least for Sean, moving back out into the alleyway early on here. Gets himself behind coverage before being spotted by anyone, but with these nades coming out so early, they may suspect it anyway. And Sean just peeks with a nade into the open. Easy pickup for Eustillo. Nifty follows it through with one on his own, and a second one here as he continues to show very little problems being able to hold out there by Ivy. Eustillo just topping away on Dominic, takes him out, and Nexa got the final kill against Shazam. Yeah, so they basically just try to get Sean Gares out to Olaf. He throws a deep Ivy flash, and then kind of hoping that it catches him. But as Sean's peeking, you still kills him. The flash doesn't even get nifty because he's inside Ivy, kind of. It's not like even looking towards teammate or anything. So, pretty uh, easy cleanup for anything. Now we see a full buy, though, coming from Misfits. We're going to see an E-Box smoke from Shazam. Yeah, it's still split up into this default pattern that we've seen a whole lot of from them. This time, though, they actually catch the first kill. Shazam was checking for an Ivy push and was able to find Eustillo and trying to go for it. Presence is still going to be there. And in fact, we may see a bit of aggressive presence rolling back out again as Nifty is trying to push out towards it. I don't know if he's going to go out as far as his teammate did, though. Since Shazam is still perched up here and is waiting for it. So that would be very dangerous if he does decide to go for this. And it could very easily just feed a second kill into the hands of Misfits. Keep in mind, obviously, the Renegade's on a bit of a swing comeback at this point. But one more round and the map is over and they've lost it. So taking huge risks like that may just throw the map away along with this entire comeback. But you can see through the out... The question out is, how long does Nifty stay here? Because... Ooh, so here comes the flash push. 
They just haven't peeked back into it. Wow. Nifty's already stolen a kill, That's though. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it ends up working out just perfectly for Nifty as he's Sean's able to move so in, mad. steal Sean, and then go back in like the 10 second period that Shazam wasn't checking for that. Now we have to see where exactly Misfits are going to try to deploy into the 4v4, though. As again, time is getting low, down to 40 seconds. The guys in Boxels aren't going to panic off this Molly or anything like that. They're probably going to end up probably going maybe two T-Con and two Ladder Room to try and push back out. But definitely still... Actually, no, it looks like they're going to at the very least throw six still towards Inner here and make it seem like it is going to be an Inner hit. It's worked. He gets that first kill. There's still two players moving in. In the meanwhile, all of the A players are evacuating here towards Inner to defend it. So it is going to be essentially a free plant out on A. But keep in mind, these Inner players still will need to stay alive to find impact. Sick getting traded out isn't the best thing in the world. And now they realize it's a fake. So Azra's already rolled back out. And he's looking for combat. So he just leaps into the arena. Gets himself some good damage onto one player, picks up the kill onto another guy peeking out for the ladder. That's Devo Dubek gone down to the ground now. And this is an advantage for the Renegades. They're even trying to flank around towards ladder room. Almanac, this may come down to timing as well. He's trying to check for it, but maybe looking away when the drop comes in. Still able to hold though. Taking out Nexon, re evening the scoreline into a 2v2. But Azur striking down Shazam just leaves Almanac up, but he's stolen another kill. And now it's 12 versus 19 HP, possibly to decide the map. Almanac has spawned his opponent. Azur's going to get that kill. Now the question is, does he have enough time for the the defuse and it looks like he does so we'll see the renegades stay in the game for at least one more round as they continue to push forward i believe up to 12 now and as with another huge round he had that ace on t side to even put themselves in this situation position now he clutches this 3v3 by getting i believe the last three kills uh, this kill is just super important but honestly that player should not be peeking at all i think if he just stays crouched there um and then kind of just hides like maybe from bomb area. He really can't be killed without the ladder player killing whoever, you know, kills him. So still no success here for the Misfits to close out upon this map. And now everybody's stacked together again on the full gun round. This may be that faster inner take that I was talking about before that we hadn't really seen the Misfits try just yet. And I'm thinking, okay, might as well give it a shot and see if it ends up working out. Even so, though, the Renegades have kept the constant two players stacked in the site in the event that this did end up happening. JKS and Nexa. Both here, ready to defend it, and they've got a few more players once again aggressively pushing up on the outer side to check towards ladder room in a moment. They'll probably check towards T-Con too. Like I said, the execute itself is going to come in a lot faster this time, so they're not going to be able to see that that easily. But next, just tearing them apart back over here behind the yellow train. Gets two kills, dropped to 11 HP granted, but no trades at all besides that. And now JKS steals a third one. It's Amanek and Shazam looking to clutch. Oh, nice second kill from Shazam, actually. Would have thought he definitely would have gotten traded by next there, but no, not the case. Now we have a 2v3 situation. They've got to be very careful though as JKS is sneaking out around them. Almanac able to read that but still not able to get the kill. Shazam is in position for a trade but he's got a lot more work to do and unfortunately for him he ends up peeking directly into the op from Nifty which closes out the round once more for the CTs. Yeah and there's that interplay. Just gets completely shut down. Nexa in the back lanes just silenced on four. Kills those players coming out of upper. Um, I mean Misfits man like I'm telling you they played the game like they were already won and not only that they were already won they played like they were playing against, you know, DMG matchmakers or something. Just, just zero respect given to Renegades. And, you know, honestly, it's kind of what they deserve, right? Yeah. If you're going to play the game like you've already won it, you're just going to do ridiculous things. You're just going to peek things that you have no business peeking and whatnot. I mean, in that last round of that CT side, two players just walk through a smoke. You know, it's like you're in a 4v1. Why do things like that? Yeah, this is turning into just a massive streak for the Renegades now. They're coming up, I think, probably close to like nine or ten rounds here. But this may also be the end of it as we see Shazam and Sick picking up the first two kills. A trade from Nifty, and Nifty's been dangerous here on the there CT side. The that smoke was really huge. It does cover off his angle and is going to force him to change positions or just hold on his own. Nexa, though, is still up and rolling as he brings it back down to a 3v3 with this kill into Devo Duvek. Nifty being allowed to push up to the green train, spotting one of the T's, but no one taking him down. And now they spot the bomb plant. They're, they know where that's going to be positioned at, so they can kind of work their retake angles based around that. Still, they don't have a whole lot of room to work off of. And the Misfits are very well secured back behind the trains and over towards the ladder in there. They need to work together. Their trades from the Misfits here on this T side have been absolutely awful. Down goes one. No room for response at all as Nexa basically just steals a free kill right out of their hands puts this into a 3v2 they're wasting a lot of time though on trying to find these last two players they need to get onto the bomb very shortly otherwise they're not going to have enough time to defuse that bomb while chasing down the last two players at the same time the smoke goes in great spray from Ominic trade from Nifty they need to get a second player onto the bomb right now and they're going to do that Ominic tries to go for the spray down but it doesn't work out and Renegades just barely steal the defuse and they push up to round number 30. 
at these 3v3s by Misfits. I don't know how Shazam died, but he died way too early in that round. Um, as soon as they got that smoke back six on the Nifty, I thought they were going to win it. But for whatever reason, like the 3v3 retake, not able to hold. So the, for the last round here, Misfits at the very least contis consistently, excuse me, getting plants at this point, are still able to go for an AK buy, but beyond that, smokes and a few scattered Molotovs are really all they're going to be able to bring to the table in terms of utility. And again, the early kills easily continuing to go by the way of the Renegades. Eustillo shutting down Omenek. Molotov's going to do so much damage to these guys, even if they get this first kill cleanly. As you can see, 74, 33, 61 damage. Another kill comes out from Devo Dubek, though, but trades again from Eustillo as he continues to battle back for the CT side and keep them in the game. Nifty finding one, but Shazam taking him down, and now Nexa alone in the 1v2, completely surrounded by smokes as he leaps himself up on top. He's going to be able to spot Shazam for free, and he knows exactly where Sick is at. He just saw him go up the ramp and was going to take him down first, but that could have given him away. Now the smoke's going to go right up on top of the bomb, jumps on it. He's going to try to play outside and try to mind game Sick a little bit here, but in doing that, he's going towards the upper check right now. Still has himself secured to go into the... Actual smoke and go for the plant. And out. we have to hope Sick can find it in the right spot, but he can't actually find him there. So they're going to steal it inside of the smoke. Nexa will be able to get the defuse from inside. And off of that, we tie ourselves up at 15-15 and go to OT. That was, that was honestly pathetic by Misfits. <laughs> no, really. Like, yeah, that no. was, I don't know. They, they absolutely deserve they for this game to go to overtime, and I hope they lose this game. I do. Wow. I don't really actively root against teams when I'm casting, but I do. Because they played the game like they already won it. Mm -hmm. And we saw that we saw that we saw the makings of that even at the end of the first half there too. We're like six. Renegades is a better team than you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm being honest. Like if you play Renegades in the best three ten times, Renegades probably wins eight times. They're like they are a better team. And for you to play like that, you know, like going back to that last round of CT side, just you know, just people just walking through smokes, like in 4v1s and things like that. I mean, how am I going to root for you to win when you're playing like you're playing against like DMGs or something? Like you already have the game in, your, in the back. Well, off of that, they do end up sort of digging their own grave here. A 12 to 3 advantage at the beginning of the half turns into 15 15. The full comeback from the Renegades, and they are able to take this into OT. And we are going to be playing on relatively standard rules here in OT, in case anyone is curious how the EPL does it. It's just MR3 10K start, so a full sequence of six rounds. You need to win four out of six of those to be able to actually win the map. Otherwise, if it's tied 3 3, you restart it and do it all over again. The 10K that you start with is restored when you switch halves, which again is going to be every three rounds. Round. So we're just waiting on the players to ready up and strategize about how exactly they're going to play out OT, and then we're going to get right back in it. Play itself should continue pretty much exactly as we saw in re in uh, regulation, as neither teams really seem to struggle with building up their economy or keep their buys going relatively uh, smoothly throughout either the CT or the T side. So we're going to be seeing a pretty much a continuation of what we saw in regulation. Now it's going to come down to who's actually able to better, uh, close out better on their T side more than likely. And that actually turned into a sort of common trend in a lot of overtimes and a lot of our matches throughout the course of the season is it did come down to who could actually pick up, you know, those one or two crucial rounds on the T side. And that may become the case here as well. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I like Renegades for this overtime. I think uh, we've gotten warmed up a bit more. They're, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I do think they're probably the better team overall and they have all the momentum in the world going in their favor. Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to take, I think, uh, I think we're going to take a quick look at one of the replays from the course of uh, regulation here. This, I believe, was the ace that we saw at the end of the first half. So good stuff, if I remember correctly here. It's, it was pretty much all shut down, but then at the very last moment, Azur rolls up with a massive uh, heroic effort here. Well, look at this. Why do that? Why? He didn't even tap the bomb. They don't even have the bomb. Devo Duvek killed the bomb carrier, and he knows the bomb's down. Now this, I kind of understand. Um, that's not like the worst peak or anything, although I do think he should just stay alive. And then Shazam, when he just walks out of the smoke, it's like... Yeah, and if he was gonna go out of the smoke, he should've went out at that right point. Right there when he was, when he was focused on his teammate. And then he decides to go out right now. I think it's after your points. Yeah, yeah after your points. It just, it just makes no sense. He tries to flash, which... Oh, great flash. <laughs> has a complete miss. Yeah, walks into it, takes like an extra two seconds to even react to spotting Azza there. And then he already. If I was Sean, I would be. Well, I mean, if I was Sean, I couldn't even be mad because I did the same thing at Z. Mm. You know? So yeah. you can't. He can't even be mad. You know? He's the one that started it off. 
If I'm Almanac, I'm pissed. I'm like, why are you guys putting me in this situation? I was playing smart, and now you put me in a 1v1 post plant where he could be hell, he could be OWAF, he could be team mid, or he could be e-box or back red. And he could just like avoid me, and now all of a sudden I look like an idiot. Well, it is going into overtime here. Keep in mind that for the Misfits, basically, you know, one or two of these maps lost, and they are out of the running to make it into the top six for playoffs here. They're in one of the roughest positions, even if they win all of their maps to potentially end up in a playoff spot. But losing these maps here against the Renegades will pretty much set that ship sailing and uh, prevent them from even getting close to a top six spot or top seven spot, technically, if we do end up with Renegades in the top six. So just keep that in mind. Both teams are really needing that. And Misfits, they basically had this first map in the palm of their hands coming off of the first half. But just a very lackluster T side. And now it has brought things back up to an even scoreline. But the Renegades certainly seem to have the advantage now. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things that I always like harped on when I was playing is like when you do things like that, like walking through a smoke in a 4v1, I would get like really angry about it because I'm like, because to me, a lot of CS and a lot of mistakes like that are down to like habit forming, you know? So I never want to do that in practice. I never want to see that in like official games, even if we're winning 14 to one or anything like that, you know? Because it's just habit forming, right? Um, you get used to doing things like that and then you do them more often and then it happens in situations on land and whatnot, right? Yeah. Well, news as we are getting started here with the overtime news from the front on the other stream is actually uh, Optic just closed out their first match against Winter Fox, and it was a 16-0 in Optic's oh, wow. favor. So we I mean, to, we need to be doing that more often, man. Given like uh, updates, other match other. updates, yeah. 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 Maybe put it on like a roller rolling third, like ESPN has it. You know where they give like all ticker. the scores? Yeah, it's like yeah. a ticker. Yeah. yeah. We'll look into that. So who they beat 16-0 by? Uh, Winter Fox. Which? Well, no surprise. Yeah considering they just lost their fifth as well, so I don't even know who their fifth is They right probably now. played 4v5 with 300 ping. <laughs> <laughs> it's bound to happen eventually when they're playing with that kind of ping, to be honest. Yeah. Authic is like, yeah. Apparently, it's it hasn't happened yet this season either. This is the first time it's happened all season, too. The 16 up. Yeah. So they were like, yeah, let's have a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> be the team to do that. But back into this match now. Uh, Nifty obviously finding himself some damage early on as he tried to go for that. I believe it was the box all's peak uh, early on here and finds himself pushed back early on. But this is interesting too because uh, this is a bit of a change up. Normally Nifty has been, you know, 100% focused on uh, Ivy unless there has been the push and he's been had to change up his position based on that. But now he's you know, seemingly very early on in the round. He's been sitting way over here instead of Z towards B. And finding himself in a bit of a different play style where they do have a bit more focus just leaning towards B, like right from the basic setup here. Yeah, they basically have, I don't know, it's a very It's a very odd weird setup, setup yes. Yeah. They don't have like no one watching Ivy, so this, that could actually go really badly like for he them. He was watching it from hell, but then he had to watch Ivy and his team in at the same time, basically. Mm -hmm. And this is th no sense. three quick kills for the Misfits. The last two were primarily focused over on the B bomb set here. A bit messy, of course, from Devo Dubek, but six able to trade on the Nexa. So it's just JKS now, and he's going to get mollied back. So doubt he's going to do much. Keep in mind, folks, obviously, with the, with the 10K start money, the uh, the CTs can actually end up breaking themselves by the third round if they lose both of the first two rounds. So saving is not completely out of the question in OT for the CTs. Yeah, and without Nifty at outside, Renegades was just lost. I mean, the setup made absolutely no sense you had one player ladder that's fine but then you have a guy back lanes to watch ivy but that leaves the player in hell having to be responsible for t mid and ivy and obviously they could just go out t mid to the t's right and literally just be undetected the entire time so yeah, the, just the setup itself just, just made no sense. JKS was actually able to upgrade to an op, so they're still going to have that going into the second round. They scavenged that at the very least. He's going to have to reinvest for himself, which brings the money down to basically nothing here for the CTs if they do end up losing this one too. And that could be a great setup for Misfits to just sweep through OT and close out quickly. But we need to see that consistency stick through now on the T side, as they're going to once again split themselves up pretty far across the map here. Three looking like they're heading towards box halls or ladder, and then the other two pushing up towards Ivy, which make it challenging. It looks, it looks like the Renegades are going back to their more normal setup now, as Nifty's back over here in Z instead of trying to push box halls, and they have JKS trying to move up aggressively here. And Nifty has had a much better track record, I think, on this part of the map, as you're going to see by that first pick up there. Just smokes it off and probably going to fall back afterwards. Nope, we'll have to hold on that one as he just got mauled. What do you seem to suspect that he could still be actually sitting back behind? Him. The, uh, the server itself. So hugs the wall. He's been calling for a little bit of team sports. The evacuation is a little bit messy, but he does indeed get out of there safely and secures the early 5v4 advantage. It's the other guys from the Misfits. Hit and run. 
Yeah, basically. <laughs> the others are trying to set up for more of a default A setup, as we've obviously got one more player drop down inside of the ladder room, and another one, I think, trying to slowly shift walk back over towards T-Con. So 1-1-2 one, one, for the remaining four players here on Misfits to try and execute here towards A. Pick up a second round here on their T side of overtime. That's Nifty again, also waits for this one, changing like his position once more to try oh. and post up aggressively, but he gives it up too early, trying to look back towards Z again. Well, he does have support from Yastilla watching out for that, so he can fully focus on T-Con. Picks up another kill. Nexus swings out from Z to cap off some more players. That's going to take down Sick Yastilla, taking out Sean Garris as well. So once again, we're back to square one, it seems, for Misfits here, as they make no progress in this gun round at all. Nemo Dubek may not even get that kill, unfortunately. He had next to dead to rights, but Nexus still somehow makes it happen. So the Renegades bounce back, and now we're tied again at 16-16. Yeah, I like it a lot by Nifty, though. Sandwich, this is the third time he's done this peak at Ivy, by the way. Two times he's been successful. Made a 45 that round, got the two kills before, and then I believe one round, if my memory doesn't fail me, I, I believe he died one round. So it seems like that's like a go-to pick of his. But I like when he moved to Sandwich, man. Sandwich is such a powerful spot when you're opping. Um, really gives you a lot of info and early info. Fallen does it all the time. He's like a master at it. Looks like we're going to get aggro team mid. And it's going to be used still posting up for it, but he's used to this. So we already saw him trying to do it a couple times in regulation. Just goes in and actually still steals the kill. But it's a quick trade from Devo Duvex. It just goes back into another 4 game. Four. I like how they push middle. You know what they do? What's that? They smoke the right side and they double molly the right side. So they have one molly close off the wall and then another molly behind the box. That stops them from being pushed on early. You literally just, you can't be in team mid. Mm -hmm. You can't. Well, early on here, as the push does continue forward, it looks like Misfits did get partial control of the outside area. The problem is they're very open to flanks, especially from Nifty, who just seems to be all over the map at this point in time. Ahamene <laughs> thinking he could pick up that kill there, but not going to happen. And Nifty steals two more to close out as the Renegades end up with a 2-1 advantage coming out of the first half of OT. You know what we should make the OT config? You know how like everybody has to ready up? Yeah. It should just go live right after, and then you get like an extra pause or something for 30 seconds. Yeah. Like a, right. just, just a bit of an extended pause. Yeah. I think some events do that. Like a lot of like online qualifiers and stuff like that. We'll just have the OTs. Like even the half times will go live right after. Yeah, because it just makes it very like disconnected, right? Yeah. So of just you know keeping with the pace of the game. Because mm -hmm. I know you have to switch, but it's like I, I understand at the start of overtime, you know, go get a drink, whatever. If you have to go to the bathroom, go ahead. Like in all sports, overtime happens, you get a little bit of a breather, right? Yeah. Every sport. Um, but then, like, there's a little mini halftime in this, you know, for, for Counter-Strike. Yeah. So I think it should just go live right away, keep with the pace of the game. Yeah, I agree. That's just on, uh, that's all, that's just on the, uh, <laughs> on the different, uh, like, TOs, convicts, and all that to configure for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think some do that, just others, a lot of others don't, especially at LAN events, I think. Like, I don't think Ebot does it by default, if I remember correctly. So as soon as those players are ready up, guys, we'll jump back into it. And for anybody who isn't super familiar with how the score lines tend to work here, the Renegades just need two to close out, whereas Misfits would need to run all three at this point. Otherwise, if you win anything less than that, you need to get it to at least 18 to retie it and take it to a double overtime and reset it again. This could be a long match, Blue. Could very well. We got what we thought was going to be about a 16-4, 16-3. Misfits likes to... Uh, Make it as difficult as possible <laughs> on themselves. Yeah, one could say that. <laughs> so we're going live with the second half for OT now. And indeed, the Renegades now finally have the advantage to work with. It took them a whole second half to work towards this point, and they have successfully managed to take it. Now they've just got to close out on the map and be able to complete this tremendous comeback against Misfits and really steal this first map away that after the first half they had really no business winning out. But by a lot of the mistakes from the Misfits, they were able to give themselves a chance at it. And in we go. Double op setup even being taken up by the Misfits here too in the first gun round, which could prove very, very risky. But, well, considering if they lose this first one, they're only going to have one more anyway. They might as well just buy into as much as they can and try to bring the best firepower possible. Nazar, unfortunately, flashing himself right at the beginning of the round, so not the greatest start for him but no one else from the Misfits are going to be peeking into the ramp room there anyway, so he missed out on much. The rest of the team, though, deployed into here. They missed the Molly, too, I think, so that's 0-2 on the teammates so far here. 
CT has already used every single smoke grenade that they have. So if Renegades wants to go into any type of an execute, I mean, oh, I Shots guess Shots had one, yeah. But still, I mean, look, they have one, two, three, five flashes and a molly. That's it. Like, that's like nothing. Uh, still a minute left in the round. So there's not going to be much to like stop Renegades from doing whatever they want utility wise. They're just basically waiting out the smokes, I think, at this point, which is now going to be gone. Sean, that was Sean, that was the most recently used one as well. He still has the molly, which is going to hold up the ramp pressure a little bit. They're going to continue forward on it anyway. Thankfully for most of the Renegades, it's, it's only as the I one player that, that pushes yeah. through. <laughs> so you still is going to get held back here. But the rest of the team are going to be able to still push through. Unfortunately, they still took massive damage from the molly or another nade. So they're just getting picked off one by one by the misfits here. Nifty striking back with one of his own kills, but he's got four more to go to try and win out this round. Probably not going to happen. Oh, R8, he's back into it again. Hits the second shot. Doesn't realize Almanac peeking out from that bottom left corner of the tanker, though. So finally, the closeout comes in and the misfits tie it up at 17. Yeah, now we're going to see a pause. Uh, but, you know, they. All their utility was wasted off Misfits, but then they go to the one guy that has the Molotov in the one spot where you can kind of just get mollied out and not be able to do anything. So really good hold by Sean. Kind of just waits for the uh, utility being used by Renegades, pops his molly, watches if they run through the molly, stayed alive for like, I mean, almost that whole round, right? Stayed alive until it was a 1v5, I believe, against Nifty, and then was the first one to die, but great hold by him. Yeah. So pause coming in from the Renegades now as there's a very large possibility that this could end up going into double OT. So probably trying to find the winning strat to just move through and close out upon these last two rounds and not give the Misfits any chance to carry this through themselves. But it is a quick pause. So we're already live with it again and we go back into the action here now. As another large investment is coming in from both teams. Full AKs for everybody on the Renegades, except for, I believe, Nifty, who is going to be able to get the op investment for himself. And, and they just donated an AK over to JKS. And also still the double op setup is alive for the Misfits as they made it through that last round pretty clean. They didn't lose a whole lot there, so they're still looking okay, financially speaking, in the second half of overtime. And now more aggression is going to be moving its way out from Misfits here too. Speaking of which, Shazam pushed up really aggressively into the halls, and he might just be able to catch a player for free. Probably heard it as they're dropping down. So if not a kill, that could be a really early potential flank lineup. Sick, he's going to move in. I'm not sure if he spotted the shadow. Well, he spotted it now as he gets not one but two kills and pushing out towards Olaf there before being traded out by JKS. Another one now waiting, but nicely spotted by Azur. He's able to counter out Shazam before he could have an impact. The secondary opera, though, is coming back into it with a little bit more firepower. He did steal the life of one of the players from the Renegades. And they're going to try to quick switch this over to a B hit. Problem being is that the bomb is still way back in T-Con. And Azur is just now starting to move in to make sure that it's actually empty so that they can successfully send the bomb in that direction. Omenek rotating back in, obviously, as everything went quiet on the A site. He is going to be checking out for Azur, who just spotted Omenek. I don't think the reverse is true, though, so Azur still has free reign over the situation. Just looking for the opportunity to cleanly take down his opponent, but misses it, and now does a dive bomb back down below the tanker, and is really just trying to avoid him now that the plan has been ruined and given away. Bomb is on its way. It's still going to take another five seconds or whatever to get it into the site and onto the ground. As we can see, the player leaping out of upper now. He's just going to go right for the plant. But still... Azur is essentially just trying to hold back a tsunami for the retake here. And we have everyone trying to move back in at a pretty standard pace. Omenek just finds Azur though, and Devo Duve picks up the last kill. So the Misfits will push forward again up to 18 and put themselves on map point again. Yeah, Azur just kind of choked it into there. I mean, has a, a free kill, and if he gets that kill and puts it into a 2v2, um, I mean, having a guy pushed up enter and a guy planting the bomb, it's definitely a round that you should win. They're going to be very favored to win. But unfortunately for him, just kind of just choke a little bit. Yeah, that's going to potentially cost them the map here now if they aren't able to follow through as this is a clean streak so far from the Misfits. And we'll see the effects of it going into the third round as a couple downgrades do need to come into play with Tech Nines and UMPs being utilized by members of the Australian squad. And they are going to split up and try to slow play this. Good news is, is they've got a, quite a bit of aggression still being thrown out by the Misfits. Devo Duvek pushing forward. Shazam is also here trying to support, though. And uh, they try to go for this sort of lineup here, Devo Duvek. I don't think he can actually hear any of it. Oh, but had Nifty peeking out, still wasn't able to hit the shot, though. I think he moves a little bit too early there. Panic the tad. And that missed out his chance for a first kill, but definitely spotted both of those players, so he is going to know just how high the, st the uh, stakes are stacked out here towards Z and how heavily Renegades may, tr may be trying to push into it on this round. I like the setup, though, by Misfits. I think this is going to work. 
as Deva Duvek has not given himself away just yet. Shazam has exposed his presence, but by restricting him, you'd oh. think they wouldn't check for Devo Duvek, but that's completely wrong, apparently. Nifty spots it out, instantly one-taps him. Shazam gets a nice no-scope on Eustillo. Unfortunately, no time to recover for a second kill. Sick hiding out, though, is able to prevent further damage from being done to the players further into the site. He picks up his first kill onto Nexa and brings his back down into a 3v3. The Renegades, though, very quickly are flooding around the site. They've got ladder of control. Sick knows it has a good angle, too, but unfortunately, Alzer's got a better one, and he's able to take out Sick. Now Sean trying to take the place of his just deceased teammate. As he moves back in, can definitely hear that bomb being planted just around him. But he's also got to check for Nifty. Steals the bomb planter, and Nifty was lost in the smoke, so he's not able to immediately trade it. Sean, given a chance to recover, picks up the second kill, and now the molly goes in. Oh, it bounces off the front, though, so it's not actually going to burn Azer out unless it spreads really far. So Azer's still going to be safe from behind E-Box here. And waiting at the time a little bit, peeks into it. Instant headshot onto Omenek. One more to go to take down Sean, but he can't do it. Sean Garris clutches out the first round, and he's going to clutch out the last one as well. And that will push the Misfits forward up to 19, where they're going to take control of map number one here against the Renegades tonight with a final score of 19 to 17. Yeah, Misfits are very fortunate that Renegades didn't take that in overtime. Um, but like I said, just. Not a, uh, not impressed by their, you know, play style, especially near the end of that game. Just, I mean, I mean, it's one thing if you're, if you're like Fur and you're SK, and I mean, even like a team like a Shalos almost never does things like that, or like say your Phase or something in your Rain, right? And you go deep in these tournaments, and you know, you don't really have anything to prove, right? You're already like a really, really good team, and once in a while, and, and you're up against a team that's 15 to three, and you're way better than them, and then you do plays like that, right? Because that happens all the time. But when you're misfits and you're playing against a better team, you know, and you do things like that, I'm, I mean, and you show like that lack of respect, it just kind of triggers me a bit, you know. And I, I just, I just think you should be playing every time you play to get better, and I think you should be not playing like you've already won, like you're playing against DMGs or anything like that. I mean, it's just not how you should be playing. All right. Well, we're going to get the analysts into the conversation now and get their thoughts on just how map number one went down. And guys, take it away. Hey, thanks, guys. Vendetta, do you echo the same sentiment? Um, Kind of, yeah. Uh, but I, I do think it's fair to point out that Sure, while well, Misfits did have a dominating first half, and uh, they definitely should have been able to close it out, especially when they get to 15-14, having reset Renegades initially as well. A lot of that first half came down to small, you know, swing rounds that obviously didn't go in the, into the favor of Renegades. Uh, you know, go back to the pistol, Sean clutches that out. Then you have the first buy round, uh, you know, where uh, they get pretty much demolished because Nifty misses a couple of shots and so on. Uh, that all of those kind of things swung in the wrong direction for, for Renegades, and that's why we saw such a big lead to it, uh, which I, I don't think would have been the case if you know it played out you know as as per usual. And I think that's kind of what Sam was alluding to as well, the fact that if you set these teams up against each other, a lot of times Renegades will come out ahead. Well, we most definitely saw some unorthodox play, some out-of-character sort of play from this Misfits side, yeah. uh, even to that note. Or even round five, we're going to load up for you guys at home and take a look at the Sean Gary's getting a little aggro here. Yeah, and this is something that, you know, initially you'd think to yourself like this, with how Misfits are playing this way, Sam is actually going to be happy about them. He's going to give them praise because normally Sam's biggest gripe about this team is the fact that they play CT sides Wait, completely. Sam's <laughs> what? No, uh, so the biggest gripe he has about this team is the fact that they never do anything out of the ordinary. This time, though, first actual buy round that we're going to see, um, you know, massive swing round, really. Sean goes aggressive towards inner, ends up finding two players in team in, and that pretty much shuts down the round immediately. Uh, big risk to take, but I kind of like it. We don't see, I don't think we see it often enough uh, in terms of like these big buy round swings where you know your opponent is low on economy, that we see enough aggression like that. I think that's a really cool play for Misfits. Well, most certainly we saw Misfits controlling the economy there in the first half. Yeah, and, very and much playing so. Playing it very much in their favor. We see a 12-3 scoreline uh, on their CT side. Yeah, and uh, uh, keep in mind, those three rounds that Renegades get, those are off of like solo individual heroics. And that that's it. Like, it Renegades were lucky in that sense to get those three rounds that they got. They definitely were in positions where they could have won other rounds to make it 12 to 3. But, you know, the the four kill from Nexa and then obviously the ace from Azer, that's pretty much what salvaged it for them and got them into the game. Or well, we did see the first map go in the way of the Misfits. The second map will be coming up, however, after this break. We're going to be going to Mirage, and I think it's any man's game, so make sure you don't go anywhere. <laughs> 